Okay? So I went to remove those log files, which is we don't need them anymore. So SQLT is installed. How do we uninstall SQLT? It's just a script. I just run this one, SQDrop, and removes the, the schema owners, it removes the, the, all the, the repository, removes everything. Now let's talk about these main methods. I mentioned before that we have five methods. These are the five methods. We have SQLT extract, execute, extract, combine with execute, explain, and extract standby. What are all these methods? Why do we have all these methods? Well, first, all these five methods, they have the same requirement. We need to connect as the application user. Whenever you use SQLT, you need to connect the application user. This is not mandatory, but it's highly, highly recommended that you connect with the application user, okay? Then that application user must have a SQL user role, except if the user has the DBA role. So you have a user that has the DBA <coughs> attribute, you don't need to provide this one. But if the application user has no DBA, which in most cases it won't have DBA, then this role should be granted. This happened automatically when we did installation for one user. But if we have multiple users of SQLT, you may want to grant SQLT user role to those users. Okay, so far so good? What else? We need to provide a password of SQLT explain every time we run these methods. SQLT explain, the, the actual user SQLT explain, contains the SQLT repository, but it has no grants, cannot do anything. It's, it's, it's very limited what we can do. The, the reason we have to provide a password here <laughs> is every time we run SQLT, it exports the repository of SQLT for that one SQL. Okay? In order to do the export, we need to provide a password. So this password is not like we're exposing anything that is sensitive because everything that is inside SQLT is metadata and it only has a repository, it has no, no power to do anything. Is that clear? Every execution of SQLT is for one SQL. So that means if I if I am concerned about this transaction, I, I produce trace, ticket prop, and I find two SQL statements, that means I have to execute SQLT two times. One, one for it for each SQL. And what else? SQLT has its own set of parameters. These are not in either Dora parameter. These are two parameters. Which, which you set up inside the tool. We usually don't have to set up anything here, but we have like over 40 parameters that we can customize SQL people. Okay, those are the, 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 the requirements which are common for the five methods. Now, those five methods, the most common one is this one here, SQL T extract. So the first time you use SQL T, you're gonna be using SQL T extract. On SQL T extract, you are going to pass a SQL ID. And that's it, you pass the SQL ID. So let me demo this with the same SQL that we have been using for ACS and SPN. Right now, I don't know what is the state of this SQL. I, I know we ran the SQL yesterday with ACS, then we ran it with SPN, we created some baselines, remember that? I don't know what is the state. And between yesterday and today, I shut down my database, which is on my laptop. So whatever we did yesterday is not persistent here. But I don't know if you remember, in some of these labs, I had some calls to, to AWR. Remember that? I was, I, I, was, I was recording some snapshots. So I am guessing that we, we should be able to find some tracing of what we did yesterday for this SQL. So let's check it out. Let's, let's try to see what it is that we can find about this SQL that we executed yesterday and we executed before we shut down the database and we brought back the database. So to tell you the truth, I don't know what's gonna be the, the outcome, so, but let's check it out. So I'm going to connect as my user. Now I'm gonna say run SQLT extract. When I run SQLT extract, I'm gonna say, okay, give me the SQL. Give me the SQL ID or give me the hash value. Well, I don't know what is the SQL ID or the high value, but it's, it's in some place. So I'm gonna look here, uh, trying to find that SQL ID. I, I don't memorize the SQL ID, so, but it should be someplace here. 
when I look, look at the ACS, and I was trying to run this test on this demo one, it says DB1, blah, blah, blah. So let's, let's find the SQL, the SQL ID. So maybe that has happened on DB. It's not here. Uh, but I remember that we saw the SQL ID. I'm just trying to find where did we see the, the SQL ID. Hmm? <coughs> on the text file, on the demo. This one here. Yeah, maybe this one has the SQL ID. Maybe this one here, right? Let's try with that SQL ID and see what happens. So I pass the SQL ID and it's asking me for the password for SQL GS plane. Now I'm saying I'm collecting so diagnostics, please wait. If I want to monitor what I'm doing here, I can always open another window. I can take this command. I can put it here. And right now it's doing the test case. It's working on the test case builder. I can see that here, test case builder. If I refresh this, it's still working on the test case builder. Test case builder, the 11 g test case builder usually takes some time. It's time consuming. It's still working there. It may take a few minutes, so I will let it run. <coughs> now it passed up a step. Now it's, it's collecting DBA history parameters, uh, segments, collecting DBA segments, metadata. So it's telling me what it is doing. It's finding what is the best plan and what is the worst plan. <coughs> it creating, it's creating some reports, a live report. Uh, now it's doing the main report, that SQL team M, that is the main report. It says no rows. So that means it's finished or it's almost finishing. When I come here, it's doing some stuff. I can see some entries here, so it's, it's doing something, right? What is that it's doing right now? AWR. So it's, it's doing something with AWR. What it is, I don't exactly what it's doing AWR. Something else, it's doing an export. It's just going on and on and on. It's doing some DK problems. <coughs> now it's running something else here. <coughs> it's running something that's called a SQL dynamic extractor. It's working with DBA objects. And if I have many objects on my database, it may take maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute to run. But it's doing something. So that, that is good news. It's, it's, it's working. It's, it's trying to get as much information about the one SQL. And keep in mind, the only parameter that I pass, what do you want here, the SQL ID. As long as I know the SQL ID, you're just trying to collect as much as possible about the SQL ID. Well, it's, it's hmm? It's looking for this SQL in memory, and it's also looking for this SQL in history. Wherever it finds the SQL, if it finds it in both places, it's going to give you all the information from memory plus all the information from memory. So, I have a question about the password. Uh, is there any specific reason why uh, asking to input a SQL ID explain password rather than role option? Rather than what? Rather than granting role? No, no, no. It's asking for the SQL password because it's, it performs an export for the SQL repository. So, it runs the export. So it requires the password of SQLT because SQLT is the owner of the objects. Why? I will demo why. I, I will get the why we have to export. So it completed. So it says, okay, you know what? I completed my file is identified by this number, 62291. That is the statement ID. And this this number that you see here, that is the SQL ID. So it was created. Where is it created? On my local directory. The same place where I run SQLT which was, remember, I double click here on SQL Plus. So my file is this one here. That is the output. I pass one SQL ID, it produces one file. Now, this file, look at the size of the file. Four megs. Okay? Four megs out of one SQL ID. So what is inside this file? So I'm going to say, unzip this file. And let's check it out. Let's, let's look at the output. Everything that you see here is coming from SQL T. Everything collected. I always start with this file that says main. 
That's the main file, the main report. Mm -hmm. Let's open the main report. Let me just make it bigger here. And it comes with this menu. In this menu, you will find many links and many entries which are not links. So, uh, for example, I come to SQL text here. If I put the mouse over, it's going to tell me where is this piece coming from. If I open this one, it says, oh, this is your select count. Remember this equals that we had? If I look at summary, grand summary, you're going to say, oh, for this equal, I'm finding two, two execution plans. And they both are coming from memory, okay? And one of them use corrective feedback. And what is the performance of these two? The performance of this plan was 0 0.002 seconds, and for the other one was 0 0.1 seconds. <coughs> That's what I have. And what else do I have? I, it's also finding a couple of plans coming from the tool advisor. So it talks to the tool advisor and it says, what do you have for me? Oh, I have this couple of plans. Let me grab those plans so I can see those plans. So if I look at these two plans, doesn't matter which one I, I take. I'm going to take one of these. Oh, remember this one, the index range scan? If I put the mouse over, I start noticing some pieces. It says, for example, for this index, it says, this index is object 1111183. That is the owner. It's, it's a, a, the type of the index is normal. It's coming out of this table, T1. It belongs to this query block, and it has these areas of T1. That are cell dollar dollar one. That is the query block. Remember we saw those on the on the one zero zero five three. What else do we see? It says my current statistics for this subject and it gives me the values. And below it says the statistics for this plan are the same as the current. So what does it mean? Well if it happens that my execution plan was created yesterday and yesterday I had a different version of the statistics I will see here what is the current version of the statistics and what was the version of the statistics I had yesterday. Is, is that clear? When it happens it's the same, it will just say, oh, it's the same. But if they were different, I will see, I will see what was different. Is, is that? Okay, that is just one of the small pieces. I have the execution order, so I know the first operation to be executed is this one here. And I look at the cost, estimated canality, this last starts, I will notice there are some columns that say last, and if I scroll to the right, if this SQL was executed more than once, and here I can see the SQL was executed only one time, if it was executed more than one time, I will see the metrics for the aggregate of all the executions. In this case, if this one was executed only one time, the metrics that I see here, everything says last, 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 which means the last execution, which means the unique, the only execution that I have. So I can see the stars are here, the output, the output rows are here. And on the overestimate, 1x, 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 that means the CBO was very precise, made no mistakes. There are some metrics here, for example, this 7, that means this operation corresponds four four blocks itself. Why do I see 7 and I say it with <coughs> four blocks? Well, the index is causing three buffer gates. Up to the table, the aggregate is 7. So 7 minus 3, it is 4. That is the most expensive operation. That operation by itself is responsible for 57% of the buffer gates. In this case, those, these numbers are tiny. But usually what you see here, you see large numbers. So it will show you which operation in the execution plan is the one that is causing the most pain in terms of buffer gates. And the same for times, and so on. And we, we notice we have some plus signs here. What what do you mean of these plus signs? Let's say that we want to know more about this operation that we have here. Well, this operation, I notice this column that says pick bind. If I open this up, it's using this bind B2, and the value that it, it passed when the SQL was parsed, it was a value of 5. Okay? If, if I were to secure the SQL many times, this value here could be different. In this case, it is the same because it was executed only one time. But capture bind, when you execute the SQL many times, every few seconds, it captures the binds that you have executed. Then it's just taking a snapshot of the binds. 
So let's say it's, it's spinning in one set of binds. It's taking forever in this in set of binds. In that case, you want to see what was the value of the bind at the time the SQL was parsed, and what is the value of the bind at the time the SQL was executed. Is that clear? So in some cases, that piece is important. In this case, it is not. What else do we see? Well, if, if I make a reference to bind B2, I would like to see the predicate. So when I open this up, it's going to say, oh, you have this as predicate that says column 2 equals bind 2. That is my predicate. It's projecting the row ID, and it's searching only one column out of this index. So that means this index <coughs> seems to be that only has one column, but let's check it out. If I come here, and I say, show me for this index, show me the column statistics. And this index, I2, it happens to have only one column, right? In that column, it has that many rows. I can see the number of distinct values is 11. The low value is minus 5. The upper value is, is 5. That's the lower high. Do I have a histogram? Yes, I do have a histogram. Can I look at the histogram? Yes, I click here. And what is this? Remember this from, from yesterday? That is my histogram. It's showing me the values. And for each value, it's showing me how many rows. And if I use an equality predicate on any of these values, it's showing me what is the selectivity. OK? What else do I get? And if I come back, and I come back, I can see the statistics versions. What is this statistics versions? Well, this index, I am back on this index. We have two versions of the statistics. History, at this time, when I store statistics, I had no statistics, and then I gather statistics here. So that means if I gather statistics multiple times over, over, over time, I will see those, those versions of the statistics for indexes, for tables, for columns. So if it is analyzed every day, then that many numbers will come? Like the last week or something? Yes, if I gather this every day for this subject, it will show me one row per gather of the statistics. So I can see patterns. I can see, for example, the number of listing values have been changing over time. Or the low value, the high value, they have been changing. I, I can see that. Okay. So all those pieces are here. I'm just showing you a small piece of what is of what is equal to. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, on, on the conference, I'm doing one hour session to navigate through the report, different different samples of the report, so you get to, to see what is inside the report. Right now, I'm just showing the high level what is that we have on this report. I'm just going to navigate a little bit more and then I will move on. Observations. Observation, this is the output of the health check. What kind of observation do we have? It has hundreds, but only those that they, they, they come positive, I mean, something that says it's a concern, are shown here. Just, just to get some, um, it says, okay, I'm finding one plan that is using kinetic feedback. There is nothing wrong with that, but it's just letting you know that you have one plan with kinetic feedback. Uh, it says, uh, none, we have no plans with baseline, so that means it's possible that we, at some point, I drop the baseline. When I was running, when I was running uh, my screen this morning, it's possible that I drop the baselines. Otherwise, the baselines will be here on this line. I will see the baselines. What about the feedback? something that we, we didn't talk about in this class, but that's something that we have on, on 11G, that when you execute the SQL for the first time, you look at the actual number of rows and compare to estimated number of rows, and if there is a significant gap, it takes those gaps saying, okay, between this number and this number, the factor is this much, and creates a hint in memory, keep that hint in memory, and it forces the SQL to be reparsed the next time. When the SQL is reparsed, it looks at these hints in memory and says, okay, estimated should be this number, but I learned from the prior execution that I should adjust the cardinality by this factor. So it pumps the cardinality up or down according to those factors, and it may produce a different plan. So is it something like the eradicate, you remove the statistics, and then? No, you don't remove the statistics. Cardinality feedback happens only at the, at the first execution, up to the first five executions of the SQL, which is trying to adjust the execution plan 
by comparing automatically estimated number of rows and actual number of rows. If there is a significant gap, force the hard part of the sequel. So the next time around, it considers that gap and adjusts externalities, and therefore the plan may change. Okay, so that, that observation you're saying, it's a heads up. You, are, you have kind of the feedback, okay? And many of those observations, they work like this. There is another one here that says, uh, the table is a candidate to be revealed. What, what does it mean, a candidate to be revealed? Okay, I, I may open this one, and, and I may look at uh, table statistics. Table statistics is saying, the total number of, of um, it's gonna, it's gonna compare the total segment blocks. This object has 2,000 segment blocks, and according to DBMS, who uses DBMS space? DBMS space? One person? What is your opinion of DBMS space? You're trying to use this for fragmentation. Uh, who, anybody else uses DBMS space? Same fragmentation. Well, SQLT also uses DBMS space in this particular observation, saying, okay, if I ask DBMS space to compute what would be the size of this table if I were to review the table, it's come back and say, okay, this table should be this long, 1920 blocks. But right now it has this many blocks, so it has more blocks than one that one actually would be. I mean, in this case the gap between these two is small. But if the gap were like several times, then the table you want to you you may want to review the table. Is is that clear? So SQL team may do many of these health checks using like a standard APIs, Oracle APIs, to do validations. So it's like, I know the actual size of the table, and I know what should be the size if I were to review. I compare these two, and if the gap is more than 10%, then I give you a, a, an observation saying, you know what, you have an opportunity here to, 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 to reveal this table. And if, if, if I were doing a full table scan, hey, well, do you want to say something? If I, were, if I were doing a full table scan and this gap was significant, that, that is something that you say, you know what, maybe it's time for me to do the thing. Okay? Go ahead. Well, the, originally, the, the idea of the observations were to trap a lot of inconsistencies that we saw in, in databases back in version, in version 10. But I mean, Carlos has been doing a lot of research to put more and more of these health checks and recommendations, not only to trap inconsistencies, but to do all kinds of uh, improvements to the schemas. Like if a column, let's say that a column is a candidate for a not all constraint, or or if uh, if you have lots of different um, uh, features going on in the same in the same. Uh, SQL, then it's important for, for you to understand all the things that are in play in a, in, in a particular SQL statement. Then, still, all those checks against the, uh, the statistics are, are present. We focus a lot, I mean, at least in support, we focus a lot in that those statistics have to be healthy. We have to put it at a name, so they are healthy. Oftentimes, there, the table and the indexes have different times in which they are gathered statistics. Why a customer will gather statistics on a table and not on the indexes or vice versa, we don't know, but we find it a lot. I guess it's because it takes time. Or sometimes the statistics in, in some partitions are out of sync regarding the, the, the main table or other partitions. So there are several inconsistencies that uh, Sometimes we scratch our heads and try to ask the customer why they do it, and sometimes just making that little change to make everything in sync fixes the situation. So this kind, kind of amazing. And the last reason we have those observations is to try to catch bugs. Sometimes what you don't know might hurt you. Oftentimes, I mean, in previous versions, we we saw that number of distinct values didn't match the, uh, the histogram. So the histogram reported uh, 10, uh, 10 values, and the number of values said 11. So what happened to the, to the one that we missed? And those kind of inconsistencies created bad cardinal estimations at that plan. And really the issue was fixing that bug in which uh, 
that the statistic was corrupted. So it is, it is highly encourageable to everybody that works with the SQL T to always scan that as observations. Carlos makes a great job adding and improving those health checks with every version of the, of the uh, SQL T. And the SQL T version changes every couple of weeks, maybe a month, but there's always a new version with new things to check. So, uh, so have it, use it, use it often, and, and review it. And whatever feedback you have about it, I mean, we're open for it, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let, let me do something here. So you know we have this observation, we're looking at this file. So let's make some changes to the data, and then let's run ACS, let's run SPM. We change the environment, and we run SQL T again, to see what is going to be different. So what is that we want to do here? Well, the, right now we're connected as this. In this case, this one is connected as um, the Q, the, sorry, the, the CCRI user. So do I have the T1 table? Yes, I have the T1 table. If I do a select a count star from T1, I have one million rows, right? What happens if I do delete T1 where row num is less than a 100,000? and 100,001. We just delete like 10% of the row, right? 100, we delete 100,000, so if we repeat this, this um, statement that we have here, we have less, less data, right? Now let's change some data. Let's do update a T1, and we're gonna say set <coughs> C2, equals C2 plus 5, where, uh, let's say, mod a uh, row num, row num, in 10 equals 5. We're just changing some rows. This one is coming with this. I don't know what's coming with this. Let's, let's just change here this uh, mod. And we're saying with more mod and C2, 10 equals 2. <coughs> Affecting them. Then we gather a stuff. Let's say we gather a stuff for this one. Let's say in DMS stats, gather table stats user, and then we pass T1. So what we did, we deleted some rows, we changed some rows, we gathered stats. What else do we want to do? I'm going to exit this one, so I don't have to exit. I'm going to go back to where we have ACS here, <coughs> to study SQL plus. And here I'm going to do like, if I open the last, the PowerPoint for, for um, for ACS on the last slide, it was suggesting to do something. So let me go back to the PowerPoint and see what was the suggestion of the last lab. So I'm going to come in here and say, okay, show me these slides. I'm going to check the material. And I'm looking for ACS, the PowerPoint, which was part of the second one here, lectures. And I have a lot of shame. And the last slide was saying about the demo. He's saying, go ahead and do demo 5. So I'm doing demo 5. What is that with demo 5? Demo 5 doing? I don't know. Oh, it's running as C, so if it won't work, so let me run it here as, as my user. So I'm coming back here, connect as my user. Then I do a demo 5. Execute the SQL, different values, different binds, etc. Then I'm going to do something similar with SPM. If I go back to SPM, um, I'm going to SQL plus 
I'm just changing the environment about around this equal. Around this equal, and I do demo one, which was a different demo one. It's going to delete any base value that I may have as far as <coughs> delete profiles. You don't need the SQL, at the end it's going to create a, um, a baseline. Remember this one that we did yesterday? Let's say that's all we did. So, so we don't know exactly what is the state of this environment. So I come back all the way, I'm going to close all these windows and I'm going to open a new SQL plus session. So it's going to start fresh. So if I go back to our SQL T here and you say SQL plus, and I'm going to say Let's say in this case, I don't want to connect as an application user. Let's say I want to use SQL keys, try connect as is. I can do that. So I'm going to say here, run SQL T extract. And I need what? I need a SQL ID. Where do I find the SQL ID? Well, the SQL ID is in, the, in different places, but the SQL ID should be someplace here. I have a SQL ID here. OK? It's the same SQL ID. So I come back and pass the SQL ID. And I pass the SQL, the SQL T explain password. I cannot tell you what is the password, but I'm passing the password here, OK? So now it's doing something, right? It's going to do another, another extract. Then once it finishes this extract, I'm going to show you what is different between these two. In the meantime, this is going to take maybe a couple of minutes. In the meantime, I'm going back to the one that we have, which is this one. And I was showing you this report, right? What else do we have? If I show you, for example, this light report. This is like a SQL T or very small. So you're going to show me the performance of the multiple execution plans. It's showing me those plans. I can drill in and solve those plans here. But the format is text-based. You notice everything is text. Why? Because if I want to document this or I want to cut and paste the execution plan into the SR, I can do that very easily because I can just cut and paste from here. Is, is that clear? Also, if I want to check only the statistics, I can come here and say, here I have my, my statistics for tables, columns. Another thing that I see, remember what, what it is, the outline? Mm -hmm. So if I needed like a quick workaround to implement one of these SQLs, one of these execution plans, I can use the outline out of here mm -hmm. and put this outline in the SQL. There are many things that I can do with these files. I, I show you two facts, the, the main report and then the line. What else do we have? Uh, let me see. We have a SQL detail report. I can see that here. That I'm going to show you with the other one. <coughs> AWR. Why do we have AWR? What is the meaning of having AWR? Well, when we execute this, this SQL, and if I look at the performance history, this equal was captured by all these snapshots. And actually, on every single snapshot here, 138, 136, 104, and so on, it captured both execution plans, the good plan and the bad plan. So I have those metrics of the performance of this equal <coughs> out of the AWRs. But at some point, I may say, you know what? I see those. What I would like to drill in and actually see the AWR. It will work for those for those time slots. Is that clear? So if if I want to drill into the AWR, I can come here and say, you know what, I have five AWR reports. Show me what you have. Let me see those AWRs. When I open the AWR, look at the values here. It's from 1001 to 1002. From 137 to 138, 1003, 1004. Those numbers, they match this snapshot that I have here. So I can open one of those reports. And what is this? This is just a standard AWR. So if, if I am investigating my SQL, and I am suspecting something else is going on at the system at the same time, I can go from my SQL to AWR and check what else was running on my system. Is, is that clear? SQL TGNS trace file, it depends which method we use. Uh, in this case, what I see here is the 10053. The method I use, which is SQL T extract, it doesn't execute the SQL. I'm going to show you one in which we actually execute the SQL. So you can see what else do we, do we produce. 
But from, from here, what is this? Remember this that we saw yesterday? Actually, this one contains, <coughs> both, contains the 10053 and it contains the 10046. What well, if I come to the plant table? I can see my plant table on the 10053. So now, if I want to, to investigate how we computed this plant table, I mean, how the CBO computed this cost, I have all the details <coughs> here. Okay? What else do I have? I show you AWR. We also have ADM. Let me let me open this and show you what is what is this one here. I open this one and I have for the same intervals I have these reports. There was no significant DBS activity to run ADM. Well, usually it will come with something. One that you hasn't seen before, what well, I, I think you haven't seen before, is this one that says SQL DX. Have you seen SQL DX? Ah. Then no news. This equal DS is something new that is going to, it, it's a dynamic extractor. Everything, let me show you and better. It, it, you will see like five files inside this one here. And those are the files. But if I show you, let's say I take this HTML file and I open this up, not with a tool, that tool fails when the name is too long, where I can open with, with this one here. It will come with some entries here. Some entries like, like what? Like let's say I want to understand the, the metadata for the binds. Just for the sake of it, let's, let's say I have an issue with the binds and I'm suspecting something of the metadata. So I can open this up and it says, okay, this view that is called DBA hist single bind metadata, which contains these columns, this, these are the columns for this view. This is the data related to my SQL. Is that here? This is dynamic. So that means from one environment to another environment, we may get different different reports. Just keep in mind, the SQL key what it's doing is it's getting everything about this one SQL. Let's see if the execution completed. Yeah, my execution completed, and now we have 62292. So let me just go back to 6. Six two nine. This one here is the new one. Let me open the new one and see what is different with the new one. When I open the new one, I'm going to start with the main report. So now I have the two main reports. Here. I'm going to make it bigger. Maybe not that big. <coughs> one twenty-five. And this one, I'm going to show you also the main report here, and make it like one hundred. So it's fine. So I'm going to make this one hundred. So we can see them side by side. Okay. Anyway, this one is giving me an error saying I could not execute this plain plan four. Why? Because I executed this as is and, and I should be executing as the application user. It's an error, but it moves on. It gives you everything here. So now, if we compare these two, everything seems similar, right? But one thing I noticed that is slightly different, this one has information about ACS, and this one doesn't. This one, we, we can see the big binds, and we don't see the big binds here. Let's take a look at ACS, Adaptive Cursor Chain. I noticed I have three cursors. Remember this from yesterday, the histograms? They are here. Selectivities are here. The actual big binds, for any of those plans, I can click on the, on the plan, and it's going to tell me the values that were used for bind picking. And if there were more than one set of values, I can see those values here, either coming from memory, or they may come from, from, from AWR, or they may come from the SQL Tune Advisor. So I can see the binds the Tune Advisor was using. I can see the binds that we stored on AWR. I can see the binds that we have on memory. The amount of information is, is huge. At this point, you should be either sleeping or overwhelmed, mm -hmm. or maybe both. Some question that you may have is, how do we look at the system stuff, and how do we look at the DBMS stuff from here? So what does it mean? 
If I come to the main report, I click on this link that says CBO system statistics. What we notice here, those are the, the stats that if we were collecting system stats, they would be here. But even if we do not collect these values, the CBO has to use them. So if you see multiple read count incentive, single read time incentive, multiple read time incentive, what happens is the CBO will use these values here. They are not part of the database. The, the secret is basically emulating what the CBO is going to do. CBO is going to compute those values so we can see them here. Now, regarding system stats, it's also showing us here some history. This history is telling me how I have been changing my system stats. Let's say I had a hiccup, and I don't know exactly what happened, but the issue is solved, but I'm trying to do a root cause analysis. So if I am suspecting someone may have changed system stats, I can come here and I can see all the values, how they were changed, and, and when. Okay? Keep in mind, SQLT collects current state, and it also collects history, whenever we can collect history. So we have history for system statistics, history for parameters. I don't know if you know it when I was showing the observations here. There is an entry here that says there are eight parameters that they have been changed. So if I open this one here, and it's going to say oh, all these parameters, like a course or bind capture interval, it has been changing over time. And I can see the different values, uh, parallel server, statistic label, all those parameters is, is, is basically keeping track of when they were changed. When I say keeping track, it's not like it's monitoring, no. It's reading this data from, from history that is part of AWR. But AWR doesn't show you this data. It's there on the tables, but it's, it doesn't show you the data. So SQLT is doing some data mining on AWR so it can show you when things were changed. Is, is that clear? Let me see what else. Um, on the second execution, my SQL is track. When I look at the history, let me, let me go to the same place on both reports. On the first report, when I look at statistics versions, I have two rows. On the, on the newest report, I see three rows for statistics versions here. What does it mean? That between this one and this one, there was an extra garden of statistics. When did it happen? What well, did it happen here? And look at this value. Remember this value? 900,000 is what we have today. We used to have that many, but now we have 900,000. Now, remember that I changed some data. Remember that I did an update. Let's, let's say I'm suspecting there was some change on the data. But I don't know exactly what may have changed. But I have these two sequences. How do I compare these two SQL keys? I can go piece by piece, compare piece by piece, or I can do something like this. Let me just show you here. I can say run SQL team compare. When I do SQL team compare, it's telling me my repository has all these entries. And I have these 62291 and 62292, which are these two. 9192. So I can say, Okay, let's take the 9-1 and compare to this 9-2 and see what is different between these two. It's saying, okay, I noticed that, that for the first one, for the 9-1, you have all those plans. So which plan I want to compare? Let's just grab any, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take the best plan in both cases, but it could be any plan. And for the other one, uh, since I have the same plan, which is okay, I'm going to use the same plan. But again, I could be using a different plan. So you're doing the compare, and the compare is done. So what do I get out of the compare? It creates this file that says compare. And what I see, it shows me the SQL text. Yeah, the SQL text seems to be the same. SQL identification. SQL ID is the same. Hash value, I have the hash value in one of them, but not in the other one, which is okay. I notice here for the blank hash value, I'm using the same. Well, when we say the blank hash value, and we, we specify the same, um, yes, it is the same for Oracle, but SQL T says that here it looks the same, but this number is red, so that means it seems to be there is something different on the execution plan, something different. 
if we compare these execution plans side by side, they may look the same, but there is something that it doesn't match exactly. So let's find out what it is. I, I, the signatures are the same for external lines and SQL profiles. Everything else here is the same regarding the environment. There was a small change of environment. The size of the, size of the test case, it went from 0 0.69 gigabytes to 0 0.07 gigabytes. It may not be relevant, but it may be relevant. The size of the database remained the same, but the objects behind my SQL, there was a small change on size. That's what I see here. In this case, the compare is coming from the same platform, the same RDBMS, so that means I can do compares from development and production, which they could be different platforms, they could be different releases, I can do the compare. Oh, I say in one of the cases you run SQL D connected as the application user, in the other case you run this as is, and it's telling me that. NMS parameters are the same. IO calibration is not available. CPU environment is coming empty, so that means it's the same CPU environment, the same fish control, the same system starts. When I come to the execution plan, yeah, the execution plan it seems to be the same. Right? It's the same. But it's finding that there's something that is different. What it is, I don't know. Let's try to find out. I can open this. This. Oh, I, I know it what is different. When I open this, this more, it's saying I'm searching this column too, but the execution plan on the right side has no predicates. You notice on the on the left side I have the predicate. On the right hand side I do not have the predicate. Is that something bad? Could be right. Actually, in this case, if the source for the second execution plan is coming from AWR, AWR doesn't store the predicates for the execution plan. So, in this case, basically, it's telling me this plan it seems to be that it's coming from AWR, therefore, I do not have predicates. Not a big issue in this case, but in some cases, a predicate may change slightly. Let's say you have two predicates and they swap. If I swap the predicate, does it make any difference or not? Yes, it may. Even if it is an AND operand, if I swap in these two, and this one is taking longer than this one here, it may change the performance. From the, from the, the Oracle perspective, these two plans are the same. But from the SQL perspective, these two plans are different. Why? Because the order of the predicates change. A small change, but it may, it may imply a significant change in terms of performance. Is that clear? Those are the little things that we can capture from here. Uh, plan information is the same, we can add the feedback, everything is the same. Binds. Yeah, it happens that we're using the same binds for both. Fine. Capture binds. In one of them we have capture binds, in the other one we don't. The same happens with the optimized environment. This is just telling me this optimized environment is coming from memory. The other one is coming from AWR. Therefore, we don't have the environment. Plan summary is comparing the performance between these two. So if there is any change in the performance, I will see those values. Red means significant change. In this case, I have seven WOPEGETs. In this case, I have 500 WOPEGETs. And it's the same execution plan and it's the same bind. But it's finding there is something different there. Performance white is fine. This one, as I mentioned before, this one is coming from AWR, this one is coming from memory. Now, regarding tables, what do we notice here that is different? Table T1, we have the two executions here. On the first execution, we have 1 million rows. On the second execution, we have 900,000. This is the time that we're analyzing. So it's finding the statistics were changed between one and the other. What are our indices? Is finding different sizes, different sizes of lead blocks, average lead blocks are different. Everything that is different is coming in the world. Okay? What about columns? What do you see in columns? Significant changes here. For example, for example, the high value. I in one of them is five, in the other one is seven. You see that? So it's, it's matching all these statistics, tables, indexes, columns, and whenever there is a discrepancy, it comes with a different color. Orange means, yeah, we have discrepancy, but that is still okay. Red, that means we have a significant discrepancy. Is that clear? 
So if we sequently compare, we can take the metadata from two environments. Could be from the same database, they could be from different databases, and we can compare them and highlight whatever is different. Any any question here? Well, in real case, normally we find other differences, and what's next? We'll fix it. <laughs> now, the problem is, in most cases, when, when we use the compare, is because our customer or our user truly believes that these two environments are really similar. When we run the compare, we notice we have huge discrepancies. Like, for example, we find missing indexes, or we find we have histograms in one of them, but not in the other one huge gaps between the two. So it's like, okay, you have all these gaps are different, that would explain why I have different execution. Now, what is that you want? You want this, this bad system to behave as the good system, or you have to mimic the same things. For example, if in the good system you have histograms, and you don't see the histograms on the bad one, well, you may want to create the histograms, right? Or let's say on the good system you have this index, but the bad, bad system you do not have the index. It tells you which index is the one that is missing. You say, you know what, we have this index that is missing, you may want to create the index. So you, you start acting on the discrepancies. Okay. That is a good question. I don't go from the top of my head and have to check it out. I know in one of them I did a transformation, the other one is wrong, the way it comes from the database. In this case, it shows the same values, but in some cases, it may be different if the content is bar card. I will have to check it out. Yeah. So I give you the two of them, but they. One is the way it's come from the database, the other one has a transformation. Okay, any any other question here? Or look at this one here. It's saying in one of them you have a histogram for this column and you do not have a histogram in the other one. And how many buckets we have? We have 255, the other one has only one bucket because we have no histogram. So those are the changes that we start seeing. And in the perfect world, if we're assuming these two systems are equivalent, they should be quite similar. Okay? What if there is a case uh, on the surface that almost they're all the same, where right? these two get a different execution? It's like the objects and the grid staff and everything. And that becomes complicated. When, when you see these two are very similar, and, and we we don't get it. I mean, we don't. The next step is to is to clear this case with each one. Mm -hmm. Test case. Because if I can create a test case with this system and test case with this one here, and I can reproduce both distribution plans, I have everything on my side to, to narrow what that is different. Because in order to have different execution plans, something has to be different. The problem is finding exactly what is that is different. But if I can reproduce both plans on my system out of the metadata, then it's easy because it's just a matter of, of comparing metadata. I compare my data and I say, you know what, I suspect the statistics. If I suspect the statistics, then I can take the statistics from this test case and put it this one here. And if it gives me the plan that I have here, then I know what is the answer. I know it is the statistics. Now it's just a matter of determining which part of the statistics. In that case, there is a module that is called a SQL team, exum. Exum because exums the statistics from, from, from the studies are dead and their, their, their history. And it goes, little by little, applying the statistic changes from one environment to the other, trying to discover where it's going. Can you maybe really better show us how to uh, maybe export it to the uh, SQL D to make the introduction and into a test? Uh, or a number on environment to do the comparison? Uh, what is the, the status? Yeah, yeah, sure, I can, I can do that. I can do that. Now, let me, let me do that. That is part of the test case. Mm -hmm. But right now, what, what we're covering from, from here until five something is SQLT, test case, code check. So if we jump from one area to another, that's perfectly fine. We're going to cover everything. So it's, the question is, how do we get this file and I get from a different system and here, right? So I'm going to do that with an with example. 
just before I do that, I'm going to show you on any of these two files, there is a readme. I show you the main report, I show you the light, there is a readme. And the readme says, how do I do stuff? It's like, what you want to do, you want, for example, if I want to do SQL T compare, if I want to do SQL T compare, what does I mean? Well, it says I need two files, two SQL T files, from two executions of SQL T. They can be from the same system, or they could be from different systems. It could be different methods, different platforms. It doesn't matter. One can be 10G from Linux, or the one can be 11G from, from Unix, and that's fine. Think compared that we have three systems. Could be, everything could be the same, but it could be three systems. You have two sources and one target. The target where you do the compare. The only thing I have to do is to bring the repository from the two sources into my target. If everything is the same system, like in the, the case I run here, I don't have to import the repository. But if I have to import the repository, these are the steps. What you see here. It's saying, okay, in each of your sources, you unzip this TC file, which is a zip file. You are looking for this export, which basically contains the repository and then import the repository with this command. And that's it. You do it for both sources, and then you can do the compare. OK? If, let me take one of these cases um, and, and do it here. Well, I won't do the compare. I will do the test case creation, which will be the same. Let me, let me just show you. If I want to create a test case, it says implement a SQL test case. It's very similar. I need to unzip. Well, in the case of the test case, I run a script that is going to perform several steps. One of the steps is to import the repository. Okay? Let me, let me sh show one demo. Let me show you what it means. If I come here to the file that I gave you, the material, you have this material, and um, I go to the one that says samples. I open this one that says samples, okay? Sample. Okay. On samples, I'm going to make a, a quick detour here for a moment, because I had a question regarding PLC code profile. Who uses PLC code profile? Nobody? The question that I had is, what happens when I'm trying to troubleshoot an issue, and the issue is coming from PLC code? It happens on a library, and I don't know exactly what is the SQL. And worse than that, it's possible this, the performance breaks not from SQL, but it comes from PLC. For example, I have a loop from PLC. If I trace PLC, I get every SQL case on the trace file. But anything that is not SQL, but is PLC, is not on the trace file. You see that here? For example, if I am working with a collection on, on PLC, and I scan the collection, that time is not shown the trace file. So in, in those cases, I want to use the PLC co-profiler, and you have these files. These, these are part of the sample miscellaneous. PLC co-profiler, when you execute it, it will show something like this. This is the output. This is another script, another of my tools, which basically builds on top of the PLC co-profiler. The node is this one here, 24, 37, 55, on one. And when you, when you run this script, is going to produce something like this. This one was executed against against the apps schema on eBusiness. And it's, it's saying, for my, my library that I profile, it's going to show me here the top 10 lines per total time. And when I look at the lines, it's possible that my, my consumers, they could be simple, like this one here, but they could be like PLC code calls. Is that clear? Now, when I look at the time consumers, let's say I care for this one that is taking three seconds. When I click on this one, it's going to show me the piece of the PLC code block that is consuming the most time. Let me, let me show you a better example. This one is not that clear. Let me show you one here. Let me show you one here. This one is me some rights. Let me see the other one if the other one is better. Just give me one second here. Yeah. 
let's say in this case, I have this for, for I, E, this PLC code. This one is consuming three seconds. So if I open this up, it's saying this operation itself, it was executed three times and in total it consumed, it consumed this time. 